Today we're going to be scanning a control arm that's been cast. It also has a machine stud on one end. We have a pressed in stud on the other, as well as a tapped hole that we've inserted uh, a bolt into. So we're going to be begin scanning with the Artec Spider. Excellent. That's all the scanning we need to do. The rest of the post-processing and aligning the data happens in Artec Studio. Now that we've collected our data with the Artec Space Spider, we can use Artec Studio to post-process the data and ready it for export. On screen right now are the four scans we just completed. Right now they're being shown in full color mode. We can change that to scan color to make it a little bit easier to interpret what's what. First thing we need to do is delete the table that the object was scanned on. We'll use the eraser tool and we'll use it on one scan at a time. I'm using a cutoff plane selection. By suggesting an area, the software will extrapolate that plane and we can delete the table. Let's do that for all four scans. Great, that's done. We can exit the editing, the editing tools. Next on our list is to bring all of these four scans together. In the alignment tool, we have one fixed scan in blue, and we can choose one floating scan in green. We can select common pairs of points. We can align those markers as suggestions, and we can use the align tool to let the software actually make the final alignment. Now these two are separated by the flip, so we can find something on the edge that's matching, something on the back of the button, the casting seam, and the end of the stud will be close enough. Again, the points that we're using as markers are just recommendations, so the software can use those as much or as little as it needs to. Great, that's the alignment done. Next on our list is to register all of the scan data. Registration is a process that takes all of the individual scan frames and moves them out along their nearest neighbors to remove duplicates and to ensure that the scans agree properly with each other. Now that we've completed the registration algorithm, we can see that there's still a little bit of noise from the table left over, as well as some hanging data around the edges of the scans. We can run outlier removal to deal with this noise. Now that we've cleaned up a bunch of the noise, the last step that we want to run is the fusion. The fusion takes all of the individual scan frames, compares them against their neighbors, and generates the actual mesh file. Now that the Sharp Fusion algorithm has completed, a fifth item has been added to our object list, Sharp Fusion 1. It's a 15 megabyte mesh file. It contains all of the surface accuracy from the original scan data. We can read the RN99 stamping. We can see where there was masking tape over the threads. The split line is visible on both sides of the part. We can even see some of the surface rust that's present in the bushing hole. This object can be exported as it is right now into control x but there are a couple things that we can do if we're if we'd like the first is we can run a small object filter and delete everything except the largest object that makes sure there's no hanging data that might be small and confusing later on during the inspection process further we can do hole filling to evaluate if there's any holes in the mesh and patch them for inspection purposes this is generally not done as you risk creating data that doesn't truly represent the actual part scanned. At this point, we will export the mesh as an STL file in preparation for inspection in Control-X. 
For the inspection portion, we will be using Geomagic Control X by 3D Systems. We'll begin building our recipe by importing the native CAD. In this case, it's a SOLIDWORKS file, but you can also use translation formats like STEP or IDIS or native files from other CAD systems. That's brought in. In general, to begin the alignment process, we always add an initial alignment to the recipe. After that, you can use any combination of other alignment structures. For example, a best fit alignment makes sense for organic parts, but in other cases, you might use a datum alignment, building a datum structure from features from the CAD or constructed features, or you could build a 3 to one alignment in the same manner. Now that our alignments have been added, beginning our inspection routine, we'd like to continue building our recipe by adding some geometric comparisons. The first is a 3D compare. This generates a false color heat map showing where the measured data is higher or lower along surface normals to the CAD data. I've assigned a color bar range of plus minus two millimeters and an acceptable tolerance of plus minus half. Next, let's add some geometric dimensions to our inspection routine. The first dimension I'd like to add is a radial dimension on the upper stud. You can see that the nominal reference dimension is called out here and we can assign any tolerance we'd like. Let's repeat down here for this stud as well. We'll keep both of these two views in the same group over on the left hand side. This means that these will be captured in the same image on the actual report. As you can see in the bottom left, the image that will be presented in the report is shown. We can assign the view that we currently have to that picture by clicking this button here. That means that this group will be shown as a single page in the report with the current view screen shown on screen. To the same group, we can add other features that should display in the same plane. We can add a radial dimension to the inside of this hole. We can also add a circularity on that cylinder. Because those two features are defined by the same basic geometry, they will appear linked in the tolerancing. Now that we've chosen our alignment routine, and selected our comparisons in geometric dimensions, we can import measured data to compare against the CAD. In this case, we are selecting the STL file we exported from our tech studio. However, Control X also accepts point clouds. I'll rebuild the document to allow the evaluation to occur. Now that the evaluation is completed, let's review the data. First, in green, we have the three radial dimensions each passing. The deviation is below the tolerance value that we've associated with those holes. We do note that the circularity that we set for that hole has failed. We noted that that hole was significantly ovalized when we were reviewing the scan data. Further, let's review the 3D comparison. In red, we would see parts of the data where the data is high. In blue, we expect to see areas of the STL file where the data is low. If we spin this around, we can see that there's a blue area here and a blue area around the seam. There's a red area at the other side as well. We do note that most of the part is within the half millimeter acceptable tolerance that we've set. Let's review the report we've created. The first page shows our company logo coming directly from the template, as well as the data regarding this particular scanned file. The second page shows the measured data. We included the serial number. The third page describes the best fit alignment. It gives us statistical information about how well the alignment was able to perform and shows an overlay of the two files. The next page shows 3D comparison. It shows it one snapshot based on the viewport we selected and shows it in false color with the colors described and using the correct tolerances. It also includes statistical information. The next page shows the viewport for all of our geometric information. This includes the three radial dimensions we took as well as the circularity. 
each is described both with a detailed annotation view on the actual picture, as well as in a chart below the image. Now that we've created the report, we can save it as a PDF. Now that that's complete, we can return to Control X. If we have more scan data, we can replace the measured data with additional STL files and generate reports. This allows us to reuse the routine we've built and reuse the report structure, generating reports quickly and easily.